Okay, so today we're gonna to look at my essential free apps for any brand new Windows laptop or computer. And the reason I say these apps are essential because basically they're there to get you going, get you writing letters, get you sending emails, getting you browsing the internet and getting your computer compatible and up to date with the modern world. So stick around, all the details coming up shortly. Don't forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to my channel. Doing these three things help us make more great videos for you. So as I say, these are my essential apps that I think every laptop, every computer needs running Windows. Now stick around because at the end of this video, I'm going to show you one place where you can download all of these apps featured in this video. So first of all, we all know that every computer comes nowadays with Microsoft Edge pre-installed, but Microsoft Edge isn't everybody's cup of tea and it's good to have an alternative. Now, a lot of people like Google Chrome. Now, Microsoft Edge is essentially just Google Chrome with a few cosmetical changes inside it. So why do you need Google Chrome? Well, as I say, some people just prefer Google Chrome. They prefer the layout to it. They prefer to go to Google. A lot of people don't like Microsoft Edge. They don't like taking you to this page every time it's been updated. They don't like this page, the start page. Don't like all this stuff down the side, all these extras here. Sometimes some of us just like pure, plain and simple. So if we go into Chrome, you'll see when you go into it, more or less, you just get going with the Google search. Plain, simple and effective. The next thing I would recommend downloading is again, an alternative browser, something alternative to Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. Now I would suggest Firefox. Now the reason I would suggest Firefox is because it has a different engine beneath it than Microsoft Edge and Google Chrome. This means if a website isn't working particularly well in Edge or Chrome, the chances are it's probably going to work OK in Firefox and vice versa. You may well find that some websites don't work too well in Firefox, but they'll work well in Chrome or Edge. So as I say, Firefox is good to have as a backup just in case something goes wrong with a certain website. You can't use it. For instance, I went to somebody the other day who had trouble with drop down boxes, couldn't select things from drop down boxes on a website wouldn't work in Google Chrome. So we loaded on Firefox, worked absolutely fine. So the next program I would recommend is Adobe Acrobat Reader. Now this is for reading PDFs. Now once you've installed that, I would recommend setting it as your default. So if you've got this here set as default or it asks you, then click set as default, click yes, and then you should get this come up, select Adobe Acrobat, select default. Adobe Acrobat is the original PDF reader. And whilst I know most web browsers such as Edge, Chrome and Firefox can read PDF files, there are sometimes compatibility problems with them. It seems to be Adobe Acrobat reader can read any PDF that's thrown at it. Some password protective PDF files can't be read in Edge Chrome or Firefox. Some extra features in some of the PDFs can't be used in those browsers either. So it's a good idea to have Adobe Acrobat Reader installed just in case you come across one of those PDFs that just don't simply work with the browsers. My next recommended app, if you don't have the Office package installed on your PC, i.e. Word, Excel, PowerPoint, then I would suggest going for LibreOffice. Now, LibreOffice is a brilliant alternative. It has a word processor. It has a spreadsheet such as Excel. It has Impress, which is the equivalent of PowerPoint. It also has drawing tools. It even has a database. And the great thing about it is, 
it can read and write Word documents. It can read and write Excel and PowerPoint documents too. So it means if somebody's sending you a Word document, that can be opened in LibreOffice. If someone's sending you an Excel spreadsheet, again, that can be opened in LibreOffice. If you want to send somebody else a Word or Excel document, that can be saved as a Word or Excel document in LibreOffice. In actual fact, I'm going to show you right now how you can set it to save files by default as Office files. So let's just go into, say, for instance, Writer, which is LibreOffice equivalent of Word. OK, so I've just opened it. Let's just get rid of the tool tips. If I go up to Tools just up there, click on Tools and then click on Options. And then if I go to Load Save just over there on the left, click on that, click on the plus beside it, click on general. And as you can see here, you've got different document types. So it's got a text documents writer. So at the moment, it's going to save it as an ODT file. But if I want to save all my future word processing documents as Word files, then just click on this drop down here. And there we go. We've got options here. Now, one of the options here is to save it as a Word 2010 to 365 document, a docx file. This is the most current file format for Word. So click on that. There you go. It goes in that box there. Click on apply and then click on the document type. Click on the drop down just there. Go down to spreadsheets, calc, and then click on the drop down uh, uh, below beside always save as. And we want to select Excel 2007 365 XLSX. Click on that there, click on apply, and then finally click on the document type and click on presentations in press, and then click just to the right of always save as, and we want to save that as a PPTX file. That's a PowerPoint 2007 365, and then click on apply. And now when we go to save a document in Writer or a spreadsheet in Calc or a presentation in Impress, when I go to save or save as, you will see it automatically is going to save it as a Word document or if we was in Calc, an Excel document, or if we was in Impress, it would save it as a PowerPoint presentation, thus making it fully compatible with Word, Excel and PowerPoint. And the best thing of all, this is absolutely free. What about, though, if you used Outlook or Outlook Express or Windows Live Mail? Then you've also got Thunderbird. That's a, a good option for you here. This allows you to set up your emails in a client, which again is absolutely free. So if, like say, you've used Outlook, Outlook Express, Windows Live Mail in the past and you don't get on with the Windows built-in mail system, this is a good alternative for you too. And finally, what about if you want to play DVDs or open strange video formats, then VLC Media Player. That is a great alternative there. It can play virtually any video file. It can also play DVDs without you having to purchase any additional software. It can even play X265 HEVC stuff, which some computers can't play. I mean, for instance, on Windows 10, if I record a video on my iPad, for instance, and I try to play it in the media player that comes with Windows 10, it asks me to purchase an add-on to be able to play videos I've recorded from my iPad. That is because they've been recorded in a high efficiency format, which is great because it saves space, but it does mean I need extra software. Now, VLC player will allow me to play those videos no problem without purchasing any extra software. So I did say I'm going to show you where you can get all this software from. So just go into your browser and then once you're in, go to the address bar right at the top of the screen, not the search bar there, the address bar right at the very top. Click in there, delete out anything that might be in there and then just type in there cwtek.co dot uk forward slash wd that's cwtek.co.uk forward slash 
WD, all in lowercase and no spaces, just as it's shown on the screen. Then press enter or return on your keyboard. And then if it comes up asking you to consent, then just either click on consent or have a look through manage options. And here we go. Here is a list of all of the software that I've just mentioned under Essential Windows Downloads. You can click on that there, that'll download it, just then install it and away you go. You'll be able to read and write email, you'll be able to view any website, you'll be able to read any attachment that comes into you, play any video and by the way, I forgot to say LibreOffice as well as a bonus. If you used to use Microsoft Works, it can still read Microsoft Works files too. So there you go. That was my free essential software that I think is needed on any brand new PC to get you going. I hope you like this video. And if you did, consider hitting that thanks button and making a donation to this channel. Or if you can't do that, then have a look in the description down below. We've got some great links down there for you to various things, including my Amazon shop, which contains all the things I love at the moment on Amazon, Fire TV sticks, Fire TV cubes, and VPNs. Buying, subscribing, and donating really does help support this channel. It helps me to be able to dedicate more time to spend researching to bring you these great videos. And whilst you're at my YouTube channel, why not stick around? I've got thousands of other videos for you right here, right now, covering all sorts of subjects. Hopefully whilst you're here, you're going to find something to educate you, entertain you, amuse you, and maybe even save you some time and money. And if you do see any videos that you think your friends, your family or your work colleagues might like to see, then please don't forget to share these videos on your social media timelines. You can check me out on X. I'm at CWTEK. You can also check out my website. It's CWTEK.co.uk. Thanks for watching and speak to you again soon.